welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer and um, we're going to make this awesome sugar plum fairy stocking made by uh, Busilla. And uh, here's what you get when you get the kit. And I know this one is a very popular kit, so I was really excited to make this one again. Um, I've made this kit before for a family member, so, and she still has it to this day. And I think I made, this is one of my first ones that I made way long time ago when I started making these kits. So it comes with a nice picture inside with all the numbers so you know where to put them. And um, it gives you like written instructions, keys and everything. And I'll show you that in a second. And uh, here is the other part. These are the written written instructions, and they've got them in several languages. And then you can see the face, and then the the uh, dress petals, and the um, cu cupcake, which you put the name on. And this one, I believe, has the chart on it. And this chart is very handy. It will tell you um, all of the colors and everything. Here's the alphabet, alphabet for the name. And this chart will tell you the types of stitches you'll be using, how many strands of floss you'll be using, how many strands of floss it comes with, and all that good stuff. And I pre-sorted all of the colors, because that takes time to do that. And I like to mark them with a pencil. So that's all the colors here. And this kit has a lot of colors. <laughs> so lots of little details and lots of work. So I'm excited to show you how to make this. This also comes with beads and sequins pre-sorted. And I love this. I wish every kit had this. There's little tiny bags for each one so you can reseal them. And then some gold metallic thread. And then a stack, literally a stack of felt. So it comes with all this wonderful felt pre-stamped for you. So all you have to do is find the number that you're working on and cut it out. Okay. Lots of colors. Here's the main color, the green, that we'll be working on. And it looks like the front and the back have a green theme. And um, we're just going to cut out the main stocking that we're going to be working with, which is on the left. And then we're going to save the backing for towards the end. And I will use the backing to make lining. So, so we're going to focus on the first piece. And it tells you what colors to use for sequins and beads. And everything you need to know is on the chart. So I went ahead and added all of the beads and sequins. And notice how some of the sequins are star shaped and some of them aren't. And I already cut out the cuff of the stocking to work on and I added the beads and sequins to that. So now we're going to go and applique the top together. And I'll be using the applique stitch here. And just hiding my knot. And I only use one strand for applique, because that's all you need. I'm just starting at any kind of corner and just going left to right. I've seen people do right to left, left to right, whatever is comfortable for you. So now that is appliqued, we can work on the little elements here. We've got a candy cane. We're going to add beads and sequins too. So for these ones, I like to applique the little, the little red stripe with a beaded sequin. And sometimes, if I feel like it, I'll go back and, like, applique them individually. But sometimes I can get away with just this. So I use two strands for beads and sequins. And, um, 
for, for the candy canes, I like to use pipe cleaners to stuff them. Just because I find it a lot faster <laughs> to do it that way. Just a little tip for you. So I'm going to do this for each individual stripe. And now, if you want, you can go back and applique the piece together. And that's what I'm showing you here. So sometimes I don't, um, depending on how, like, either how I'm feeling or depending on the type of kit that I'm using or even the size of the candy cane. Sometimes the size plays a huge difference. So the bigger the candy cane, the more likely you're going to want to applique each individual stripe. So now that is appliqued, we're going to attach it. Okay, so I did this wrong, <laughs> by the way. Um, it's been so long since I've done this kit that I used pink to applique it, but in actuality, you need to use white. I, I, I made it work. But if you're making this kit, um, use white to applique your, your candy canes, and then, um, we're going to use the pink to do an outline stitch all the way around the candy cane. I read the instructions wrong. Um, and they were a little bit, honestly, they were a little confusing to understand. So uh, I go back and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I should have used a regular <laughs> white instead of the pink. But honestly, it turned out cute and uh, I'm not mad at it. So I just want to throw that out there. That I do make mistakes and I do read things wrong. And sometimes the instructions can be a little bit like vague and or confusing. <laughs> so, but yeah. So if you're going to make this stocking, please use white <laughs> to match. And then we're going to, I'll show you what I mean um, later on. Um, we're going to go around again with the pink. So for now, we're going to move on to the next candy. And I'm just adding an outline stitch here with a light green, two strands of light green. And I just go to, to the edge as close as I can. Um, sometimes, depending on the felt, I will start from the inside out instead of the outside in. Just because some felts are a little bit thinner and it's harder to grip a knot at the edge rather than the inside. But luckily, the white felt in this kit is rather sturdy, so I felt confident to start from the outside in. And we're going to do this with both candies and both candy canes, because there's, there's this, they come in a set. Okay, so now that we have the candies done, uh, I'm just going to add these stars on here. Simple stars. And now we're going to grab the gingerbread people. I am using a French knot here for the eyes. Two strands of black. I, honestly, I've had kits that say one strand for a French knot, and I still do two. Because one strand, you can barely see it. Like, you might as well just keep the stamp there at that point, because it's so tiny. So even if sometimes the kit calls for one strand for a French knot, I'll double it anyway. Just so you can see it. But that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing French knots for the eyes. And then I'm going to go in and do the other one. Okay, both eyes are done. Now we're going to do this little mouth here. Uh, with red, and we're going to do like a little um, outline stitch here. I think these gingerbread men are so cute. Makes me want to go make gingerbread. <laughs> so these gingerbread men, I believe, are twins, possibly. <laughs> I don't think they vary in color, so... There's the little mouth. I'm gonna do the same for this guy. OK, 
Okay, mouths are done. Now we're going to go do the little buttons. Oh, we'll, we'll save the buttons for last. We're doing the outline now. And the outline is a, um, it's a chain stitch. And a chain stitch, it looks really good when it's done correctly and consistently. I think the most challenging part of a chain stitch is to make sure all the chains are the same length. And it takes practice to do a chain stitch. I've done a lot of chain stitching and even now like I feel like sometimes I struggle with it just to keep the loops consistent and like not all over the place. Spacing is key here. But once you finish it actually looks really cute. Like icing on a cookie. I'm going to do that all the way around for both. Okay, once we have our gingerbreads on here, we're going to stuff them very, very slightly. I only use a little bit of stuffing here because they are cookies. They're not, you know, if you bake a cookie right, they won't be too puffy. <laughs> so I'm grabbing my chopstick and using the bigger end to get at the head. And then I'll, um, I'll do the little arms with the smaller. Got to get it in there. Get it in there. Notice how one of them has red and the other one has green. We're going to stuff both of these. Okay, uh, I jumped ahead and did the last candy cane. And now I'm going to show you what I mean about the pink around the, um, the border here. If I look, honestly, if I looked at the picture beforehand, I would have, <laughs> it would have dawned on me that, oh yeah, duh, this is, this is obviously what you do. But um, I was a dummy and <laughs> didn't really think about it. Still turned out really cute. So I'm literally going around the uh, perimeter of the candy cane. And I'm, I believe I do this with every single piece of candy. So I'm just going around adding this pink border. Trying not to get my thread all knotted up. And uh, I'm just going to go around and do that. And you'll see what I mean when I'm done. So I figured I did pink for, the, for one of them. I might as well match them for the rest. So it looks like it goes together. So now we're going to add the band on here. And notice how um, the band is a little bit longer than the stocking. So <clears throat> um, I just added the... Um, running stitch here first before I put the stripes on. And then once I have the running stitch on here and the stripes, kind of like a candy cane, uh, I'm going to tack it on and see how much I need to trim because uh, I noticed it's a little bit on the longer side. And sometimes you have to do that. I don't trim unless I absolutely need to. So here I am doing the running stitch as best I can because this one's really close to the edge. Luckily it's on a white felt and the white felt in this kit is very, it's nice and thick so I don't have, you know, too much of trouble. So it's every other Okay, this is what we have done so far and so far I am loving this stocking. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.